So here, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. So and then, guys, if you can hear us, just give us a thumbs up there. So I know that the connection is good and uh, and yeah. So thank you. First of all, thank you for doing it, Xavier, because uh, that, you know a lot of people are still in lockdown, and to hear stuff from top, former top twenty players always a pleasure and fun, you know. So I had Mark Filipuses, Mary Pierce, Paul Anacon, uh, a lot of players and coaches and friends. My friend Dusan Laovic, you know, a lot of people um, are very cooperative with that. So thank you so much for doing that. Uh, no, anytime. Thanks for having me on. And don't look at the woman behind me. It's just a poster. <laughs> <laughs> Everything good. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> with the lockdown. But, uh, you know, the main reason is stay safe. And uh, and I'm uh, happy to be on. And uh, let's have a nice chat. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so you see, my wife, my wife made me to put my dry erase board on there with doubles. I can't have a woman on there. So... It's it's all right. I, I got I got over it, you know. So it's all good. Um, yeah, all good. So so um, you you've been like top twenty in the world. So you had an amazing career. You know, when I was younger, as a lot of us, I tried to. Uh, you know, I'm two years. I think you're born 1980, right? So I'm 1982. So we're close in the age range. I was born and raised in Germany, and you know, I tried, couldn't make it, and it's it's one of the hardest. Uh, jobs to be a tennis pro so tell us how your journey started when you were younger did your parents put you in tennis or how did everything start um to be honest uh, my parents nobody in the family really played my brother played he's three years uh, three years older than me um and he started playing so i kind of just went to to the club with him you know i was five years old um and i don't remember because you don't remember at five but i apparently yeah. just picked the racket and started hitting these big moose balls against the wall um, and then a lady from the club said oh how long has your kid been playing and my mom said well this is the first time he picked up the racket and she goes <laughs> well pretty good so maybe just let him play also you know my brother like I said was three years older and uh, I was just going to the club with him and it just gradually you know I played one hour um, you know, these days it's with different balls and stuff, but you know, we mm -hmm. used to have big, big moose balls that you could hit as hard as you could have been going anywhere. Um, but yeah, just kind of rolled into it. My parents never played, nobody in the family really played sports, um, but just my brother. And so I just kind of rolled into it, went to uh, a very good school in the beginning, mm -hmm. and uh, just you know, but I did it not. You know, you see a lot of kids these days, it's straight, oh, he's got talent. So mm -hmm. if you put them five hours straight away, just, you know, my parents weren't like that. They said, well, if you want to, just we'll drive you for an hour, enjoy it. And it was just playing. So, um, yeah, just follow my brother's footsteps, who was also a very good tennis player. Um, and just, uh, yeah, had a, had a, that's how everything started, just by picking up and somebody seeing me. Did you did you play like you know me coming from Germany too and you're not far away with Belgium right so did you play uh, soccer as well like a lot of kids play soccer did you play other sports Yeah I think it's important to play other sports you know mm -hmm. if if you focus on one sport when you're 6 7 8 years old you're going to get a burnout by the age of 14 15 so um yeah I played uh, uh, football as we uh, soccer mm -hmm. whatever you call it these days um and uh, yeah, just, you know, I ran, um, it's just a lot of sports, but everything with a ball, my brother and I were pretty good at. So, you know, we, we did a lot of things, but mainly it was tennis, uh, yeah, football. Um, now I play uh, golf, was back in the day, it was unheard of. But uh, <laughs> I played a lot of ping pong with my brother, you know, we had a lot of fights, a lot of ping pong. But uh, yeah, just, you know, it's it's good to develop your 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 uh, your skills, your hand-eye coordination it doesn't have to be tennis all the time. I think it's very important for young kids to do what they want and and just play other sports and get you know get developed. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great message. You know, like I think too people, too many people specialize the kids too early. As you said, they burn out. You know, I teach since twenty four years now. It's uh, it's it, it happens a lot. And then obviously, you know, playing all the sports and that, but what. At what point did you know 
you look, I, I have a talent, you know, I do that a little bit better than other kids. So what, what you, because, you know, you can't do, I played soccer parallel to tennis and at 14, you know, I trained both every day and then you had to decide, do I play a tennis tournament the weekend? I'm going to sit out on soccer the next weekend, you know? So, so at some point you probably had to decide, you know, what, what you're going to do. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a good point because at, at, at some age you do have to decide because you can't do it all. Um, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, I went at 12 years old, um, I had a very good uh, teaching in an academy uh, where my brother was until I was 12. And then at 12, because things were going good, um, the federation came from mm -hmm. Belgium and said, listen, would you like to join us? You know, so... At 12 years old, I did go to the Federation. Um, I went into boarding school for four or five years. I mean, it wasn't easy. You know, everybody always thinks, well, it's just play tennis, have fun and all that stuff. You know, I had to get up in the morning. Um, I had a, probably about every Monday, five o'clock. You know, my parents, um, that's one thing I want to say. My, my parents were, they wanted me uh, to do what I wanted to do. They let me free of my choice. But mm -hmm. if I to do it i had to go and get it so every morning mm -hmm. monday morning i had to take the train at six in the morning uh an hour and a half on the train with you know a tennis bag uh clothes for a week my school bag because obviously i was in school and then i had to walk another half hour to um to the boarding school and drop my bags off then walk to the school i mean it wasn't easy you know it wasn't like uh we were driven to, to the from from door to door so you know, I, I enjoyed it. And it, you become independent very quickly when you're in mm -hmm. boarding school. Um, and, and I enjoyed it. And the federation at that time was very good. Um, a lot of young players. Um, Kleisters was there also, you know, two, mm -hmm. three years, two, two or three years younger than me. Um, but we had, we had good players. And so, you know, at 12 years old, went to the federation. And, um, and then just, yeah, you know, you, you, you start winning in 14s and 16s. And, you know, your question of when did you know um, is a tough one. I never really yeah. knew. You know, when you're 12, 13, you don't know any better. You just play, you win, and mm -hmm. you, you act stupid and have fun. You know, that's, the, that's, <laughs> that's what it is. But, um, you know, at some point at 12 years old, I did make the decision to, okay, uh, football tennis I think I just took tennis because I was winning all the time you know Belgium's a small mm -hmm. country uh, Oliver Rokas was winning everything on the French side I was winning everything on the Flemish side <laughs> and we would play together in a uh, national tournament so um, you know you choose what you're which yeah at that age you want to win mm -hmm. so you what, what feels good so you know but uh, it's it's just yeah gradually you you kind of glide into it and you know what I think it's important what you said that's you know I live since 10 years in the United States and kids are spoiled where I live a lot of kids you know not all but all a lot and I think you know coming from Germany I had to go with a train to tennis too you know and as you said um being like every day on 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 that doing that every day appreciating that you have to go like an hour it's not like someone brings you there and you sit in the car and you're on your phone like today right so so it's, it's it takes a lot of effort and that's i think what people don't see a lot of times how much time how much love and how much how much you put into your junior years to become what you what you became you know a top 10 20 players and i think that that character trait you develop doing that every day you know that made you more resilient when you were playing on tour yeah, I mean, it's a long process, you know, just yeah. like sport. But, you know, then I decided to go to the States. You know, I've been in the States for 23 years also in Florida. I went to Boletaries at 17. Um, it's another decision you make. You know, I quit school, which is dangerous because if you don't succeed, yeah. then obviously you're stuck with no degree. And, you know, so it's it's not easy all the time and it doesn't come easy. Um, but... Um, you know, I enjoyed it. One thing that's really good in the States is sports. They know they know their sports. Um, I know you say there's a lot of spoiled kids, which I totally agree. Um, but the way they look at sports is um, is very good. It's so positive. It's yeah. a different mentality. And that's Especially why college. Never... College tennis, you know, yeah. becomes better and better. College, pro, I mean, it's so good. And, um, you know, in Belgium... 
it's a lot of you know a lot of jealousy a lot of negativity um, you know, germany there, germany the same so <laughs> yeah, i think europe is is tough with that and you know in the states they they love their athletes and yeah. i think I, i don't mean it like you know no no like, I, i i know but it's just you know you it's just they they're so positive they every practice has its positive where in belgium was was too tough for me i was i was a bit different i had a different character i'm a little bit outgoing and crazy sometimes but <laughs> you know i when they asked me when img came to me at 17 years old they asked me what do you want and i said i want to practice positive in the sun i want to feel like i'm sweating and they all laughed at me and they said right in the sun and feel like you're sweating and they said we here yeah. i said you don't it's jealousy you guys only look if somebody does well how to bring them down and yeah. i was sick so i left and that's one thing that the states does wonderfully well is and i agree with you 100% you know so you know tennis house what i built up five years ago you know in in europe uh, the federation helped me you know uh, like here i got support when i came with the idea you know that that you know i started on facebook building a group where coaches help coaches and you know just and the 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 whole team aspect and help here is different if i would have gone to the german tennis federation they would be who are you what are you doing you know it's it's different here here if in the us if you work hard you know you you i think that's still super great here you know and as you said sports is the colleges with dominic kupfer who's a friend of mine you know he he's now playing at the strain open he won he played here in tulane where i'm from in new orleans a lot of great guys come from college and uh, I, i agree with you i think that's very important that's one one uh, reasons why i went to the us as well you know so all right so yeah, so we we um how just quickly a transition like you did you go through futures like others and challengers or did you get a lot of wild cards when you were playing when i asked monica puik you know she said i had to play through everything i never got anything yeah um i i mean i'm gonna be honest i was pretty fortunate because i played good in the juniors mm -hmm. and then he came knocking at the door um and you know i got a lot of wild cards in the beginning um which helps too, just uh just uh just normal um yep. the good thing was that when i had the wild cards i played really good and i i moved up quickly to about 150 to 100 mm -hmm. in the world so then you get qualies in grand slams and i made it so i never went i think i probably play you know the satellites back in the day i only played um, one or one or two and i played maybe five or six challengers and then i was on the pros um so i i was very fortunate in that way um i will say in 2007 i got injured and then you know you're older so you don't get the wild cards anymore um and so i played the challengers and to be honest um if i had to do it all over again i think the challengers is an amazing way to learn about life to learn about mm -hmm. what it is to be an athlete how to get there because everything came pretty easy to me in the beginning and which was a bit of a downfall to be honest you think you don't have to practice you don't have to work out hard in the gym and so um it, you know you sometimes say it catches up to you it did catch up to me at some point and um when you go to a challenger in i went after in donetsk or in prague in the middle of <laughs> Nova, and you have to earn your points you know why you're doing it and that's 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 the thing that if i would have known that at 18 19 maybe i wouldn't i would have yeah just maybe instead of 19 it would have been 15 or 10 in the world at some point so you know honestly it's a really good lesson you don't want to play challenges for three years because then something's yeah. wrong but yeah. to have <laughs> to have some you know, play 10 15 challenge in the middle of nowhere nobody watching earning your point is a i mean about life tennis everything is a really good lesson yeah. That's what Monica Puig said, you know, she didn't, she, she played all the, you know, the low tournaments and walked her way through and whenever she struggled, she, she says, she said, you know, she can go back in, your, in her mind and remember how it was, you know, to, to start. And as you said, in Donex, there is nothing, right? Or you go somewhere in Siberia or whatever, that's tough, yeah. you know, so, 
So, um, and that, you, you did it similar like to Mark Philippoussis, you know, who had on, you know, Mark's, Mark got a couple of them only and he played well like you. And, you know, but you, you guys obviously, um, you, you earned it and, and the way it happened happened for a reason. But I, I totally agree, you know, with you. I heard that many times, you know, that players said, if I would have played a couple of more challengers, you know, might have mentally got me up to a different stage. So, uh, Wimbledon 2002 was yeah. your biggest, like, you know, tournament, like, in, in sense of semis. Um, yeah, like, grass in, in general, you know. We have, in, I think, in, I'm from Berlin. We have around Berlin, like, one club that has a couple of grass courts. I've played a couple of times. But, like, so, so um, why, why do you like Wimbledon? And, and, and uh, how, how did it come in that year that you played the semis? Uh, I mean, I think Wimbledon, you either get frustrated or you love it. Because on grass... You get away with shots. If you have good feel, you can get away with a lot of things. And I just always enjoyed it. I felt like if you got the first hit in, you had an 80% chance of winning the point. If you come to the net and you have some feel, then you're in good shape. So I always loved the, the style of play Wimbledon. And then the whole tradition, you know, I was with IMG. I'm very close with the, the McCormick family. Um, so for me, Wimbledon was just so much fun. You know, I used to go to the ING house. Um, you know, all the players, athletes were eating there, have a drink. It was just an unbelievably good vibe when I was, when I was, I think, 19, 20. Um, and then and that's why I think I played the best there also. You know, it's just I had a good draw in the beginning, then I felt good. Um, like I said, my best friend... Uh, Jimmy is the brother-in-law of Martin McCormack who founded IMG and is still my best friend today. So it's always been in my circle. And, you know, when you feel comfortable with some, some place or somebody, you just play yeah. well. You know, a <laughs> lot of players. Go ahead. Delray Beach. Yeah, Delray Beach. You know, <laughs> for me, same thing. But same thing. You know, I could drive there three hours from where I used to practice and live. And you're just comfortable. And I think with a lot of players, if they're comfortable in some place, they play well. I mean, if you feel good, the, the, the ambiance is good, the tournament feels right, you play well. It's very simple. So I had that in 2002. I felt so comfortable on the grass. My friends was there. I had a buddy who traveled from Florida with me who was English. Uh, my family came over after the fourth round. So you just feel comfortable. You feel at ease and then you play your best tennis. And, you know, you need some luck too at some points yeah. when, it, when it's, when I played Krychek and it was seven all in the fifth, I don't think tennis matters anymore. It's just one point that will make the whole mm -hmm. difference. So I got lucky one ball went out two inches and I won. So you need some luck too. But, you know, you feel comfortable, you practice hard, you're just going to play well. So before we come what you, to what you do today and everything, I just wanted to ask you, so you, you beat uh, Nadal, Safin, Henman, Kafelnikov, Djokovic, Ferrer, so you beat all those guys, right? And uh, for me, the era, since I'm as close to your age, you know, I, I thought, like, I mean, we had so many great players. And then, you know, you come to the era and you played Djokovic, you know, the Djokovic, Nadal, Federer, they're from the, you know, from the played since two decades already. What do you think, like, the younger guys, you know, like Felix, Ogier, Alizim, and all those guys, you know, um, when, when, when Nadal, Djokovic, and Federer leave, you think they're going to take over like them did? Or do you think it's going to be a little bit more, more even? Um, I think it will, it will be a bit more even. Um, to have, a, you know, an era with the Federer and the doll is just, it's just ridiculous. You know, it's probably a bit like the Sampras Agassi times or the McEnroe mm -hmm. time. But there will always be these two, somewhere two or three players that stand above. And that will probably happen now also. But I feel like with all the new material, the new things, there's going to be a little bit of wider... Um, field of guys. There'll probably be five, six, you know, you got the Tsitsipas, the Sverev, the team. Uh, I'm forgetting people, but, you know, a Kyrgios could be good. Yeah. All, the, all those people. So there's just more out there, you know. Back in the day, if you wanted it, you wanted it. 
Um, yeah. I think that's changed a little bit because of, um, you know, you know, I'm not going to say prize money, but prize money helps to get a physical coach, uh, oh, yeah. a mental coach, you know, massage <laughs> therapist. I mean, I couldn't do that. I'd be broke today, you know? I mean, yeah. it's just what it is because the prize yeah. money wasn't that high. I'm definitely not complaining because we had a nice life and everything. But I'm just saying with the, with, the, with the money out there, you can invest more and have a bigger team around you even yeah. when you're 40 or 50 in the world. So that changes. So th I think that's going to be a big, um, big um, thing for having more people have a chance to actually yeah. become, you know, that's why it will be wider. But, you know, then again, how much fun was it to see Feather and Nadal battle it out and, and, and the way they played and, and the way they achieved sports too. I mean, the gentlemen. So, you know, I hope with all the, um, all the social and all the recognition that the next group that is available will be as much gentlemen as a Federer and an Nadal because, you know, it helps the sport tremendously and it is where it is today because of because Sam, of because Federer and Nadal, you know, the way, how yeah. nice they are. So, yeah. it, you know, it's not just tennis. It's a, you have to be a good person also. And that's a big, big point you said, you know, like when I had, when, when I talked to Mark, he said like, you know, the war one thing I would have changed is, I would have had liked to have a physio and I would I should have invested. My knees would have hold up better, you know, he said like and that you know, like like my friend like Damir Zumo, he just lost first round at the Australian Open where he was you know, top twenty five, you know, that he had a physio. So all the players, as you said, they have their physios because a lot of people who are watching don't know you have maybe one, two physios at a tournament, even a grand slam and you have to wait and it's always a pain in the you know, like to, to get through there. So I think uh, as well, you know, that's one of the main reasons like the top 50 player can play longer and you're not in a rush to develop yeah, your... Definitely. I mean, we used to, I mean, the, the, the ATP physios are great. Yeah. But there's two or three guys for a hundred guys. So, yeah. you know, you had to wait in line or you just couldn't do it. You know, if you have your own, your body feels better. You got more chance to succeed. And it's just, you know, it's, it's a circle. So, which is, I mean, I, it's a lot better. You know, because everybody is at, at his best, but that's the difference between now and 10, 15 yeah. years. So, Xavier, what are you doing now? Like, uh, our post career. So, what, what are you doing now? Uh, I, I drink a lot of uh, champagne and uh, alcohol. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I enjoy I play on the Champions Tour uh, mm -hmm. a little bit. I play events. Um, I, I love it. To be honest, it's... Um, it's it's a great way and that's one thing i would like to say is you know when you're on the pro tour you're in your bubble and you think oh, if i give half hour of my time to a sponsor i'll be tired tomorrow you know back in the day that's how you used to think and now um because you play on the champion store the result is not the biggest issue anymore mm -hmm. you know the pressure is gone and now you learn how to deal with sponsors and talk to them and have a drink with them and it's actually really nice i love it i mean you know you play matches you give a little bit of show you play serious you talk with the crowd there's so much more interaction that i love it more now than i when i used to play sometimes because it's just it's nice the fans are there and you can finally make a joke and you know yeah. it's tough because <laughs> you 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 you, you, I mean, you want to win on the pro tour, and but you forget about what it is all about. You know, you, you sometimes forget the game you love because you want to win so bad. You forget what's going on around it, and that's one thing. If I could do it all over again, I'd be mm -hmm. a lot more involved with fans and stuff because it's so much fun. I really enjoy it. Champions Tour. I play a little bit of club matches. But it's just, you keep busy, you love the sport, you try to give back to the sport, you try to help kids sometimes, you know, just to give a couple hours of your day. And I, I, I love it. I mean, it's, you know, I've had this nice, great life because of it. And mm -hmm. I want to keep giving back too. Do you, do you live at the, do you live, uh, if COVID wouldn't be, would you still, would you live in Belgium or do you live in the US? 
Uh, okay. no, I'm, I'm in Belgium now. Um, we can't get out of here like a lot of people right now. Mm -hmm. um, well, I love Belgium, but the winters are strong, especially right now. It's like minus six, snowing. I don't know how to drive on snow, so it's not good. <laughs> um, you know, 22 winters uh, in Florida. Uh, okay. I mean, I love my country. The summers are great, and I usually go to the States like Florida around mm -hmm. November till February because it's nice weather. Um, and more opportunities again to practice and do sports there. So, um, no, I mean, it's a good mix. I, I really enjoy it and uh, hope I can uh, continue like that. Yeah, and no, I have to get you when you're in the States, in Florida. I'm in New Orleans, so I started organizing tennis conferences. You know, Emilio and now Arancha Sanchez are good friends of mine. They've been, they came, you know, and did some clinics. And then uh, my friend Douglas Cordero, who works with Dominic Team. You know, like work with him fitness. He, you know, he came and yeah. If you're ever around, that would be awesome. Maybe to have you. And then uh, we work at the beautiful club here, so you, you know you can do some clinics and enjoy life here in New Orleans. <laughs> I mean, I, I enjoy it. And my first flight will be to the states because I haven't been in a year. So um, as soon as everything hopefully soon comes back to normal life, we uh, we can definitely do something and enjoy uh, and have fun. That's awesome, Xavi. Ken, thank you enough, man. That was fun uh, chatting with you. And um, yeah, so I wish you, as I said, all, all the best. And if you're in the States, maybe we can uh, catch up. We can attend one of those conferences and speak and present and do some clinics. You know, I'm going to try to get uh, Gigi Fernandez, uh, Pernafors and Emilio this year back, you know, and then, uh, you know, having a fun group over there would be cool to have you. Anytime would be would be a pleasure and uh, thanks for having me. I love chatting about tennis and uh, anytime just let me know and uh, we'll have another chat and maybe see each other soon. Thanks so much. I can't thank you enough and uh, I hope uh, you you improve your golf game even more than yeah. you do already. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. That's what I'm working on. But uh, stay safe uh, and your family and uh, we'll chat soon. Thank you, Xavi. You too. And uh, yeah, enjoy the day, man. Thank you so much. Okay. See you, man. Ciao.